All right, welcome back. It's time to give our website access to more data. Now, up until this point, we've allowed users to upload files to our server, which that data does persist. So if a user leaves our website and they come back, it's still there, but we want to go a little bit further. We want to take advantage of databases. Now, databases are going to give us several advantages. Not only are they going to be uh, quicker and more efficient, but they're also going to allow us to search our data for particular related pieces of data much better. And they're also going to allow us to analyze our data much better as well. So if you think of your favorite website and think of the killer feature that website has, I would make a bet that it utilizes a database in some way. So I'm over here on Wikipedia, and it's just a list of the most popular websites. And for instance, like Reddit, um, the feed of posts that come in, um, that uses, it uses a database. Uh, Wikipedia, all the different uh, information that's posted there, that utilizes databases. Um, doesn't really matter um, which one of these websites you look at, more than likely the, the killer features really are probably going to use, are almost definitely going to use a database for that data to persist. So, Anyway, um, there's two different major types of databases. There's the structured, and then there's the unstructured. Uh, a, structured a structured data, for instance, is going to look a lot like an Excel sheet. You're going to have different rows and columns. Where unstructured will be a lot of the other different ones, which doesn't fit an exact mold. But there's still a lot of value in that data, so they still want to capture it. And we're going to be dealing with structured data because it's just, it's pretty simple and it's going to give us a lot of advantages for searching out particular pieces of data, especially related pieces of data. Um, anyway, our database or schema is going to have different tables. And these tables are going to have, uh, you know, a particular uh, set of data. So like it, it would be like a, a table would have, you know, the columns like you'd expect in Excel or spreadsheet. And then you would have different rows. So this one looks like an employees table. And as you add employees to your company, you can just add a new row with that employee's information. And of course you can delete one once you no longer have that employee. But it provides the structure for what you're, what you're looking for. Now with unstructured data, you're still using different keys to access those pieces of data. But if you lose track of those keys, you don't have as many options to be able to access that data. It might be harder to find that particular piece of data. Now with the structured data, like we're gonna be using, let's say for instance, uh, you have a customer and they don't remember their account number. Well, and that would, that would be a column, would be account number. If they don't have that, we could search by name to find that particular piece of data. And, or we could use a social security number or some other piece of, some other attribute um, in that table, find that piece of data. So there's some flexibility there. Uh, another example for using structured data like we're gonna be using, let's say you have a table of customers and you have a table of orders. Now, you're gonna have many more entries in that orders table than you have in that customer's table. So one customer could literally have thousands, if not, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of different orders if, you know, if they order through your company quite a bit. And let's say, for instance, they want to look up a particular order. Well, you can use a key, like a, a foreign key, where we have this data related. So if I wanted to search for a particular set of orders from a particular customer, I could use, for instance, here, the customer number to search for all orders that have that customer or customer number, which would greatly reduce all the orders I'd have to look through. That way, I only have to look through the orders for that particular customer. And if I wanted to go a step further, you know, I could say, hey, we know the order they're looking for was between this date and that date, and we could set a range, and we wouldn't have to pull up all the customer's orders. We could just pull up a couple of them between a certain range 
and we could get find the order information that customer's looking for. So that's some of the flexibility with these relations, uh, these uh, this related data, you know, that we would get. And like I said, because it's it's structured, it's more efficient. We're not going to need as much uh, much storage. But I mean, it also if it's unstructured data, if it's audio file audio files or video or something like that, it's just naturally going to take up more data. Video, ta video takes up quite a bit of data. Um, with structured data, it's a little bit easier to manage because we know what's coming in and what's going out. We know what you know, less uh, you know, data types to deal with. Um, and on the other hand, though, yeah, like I said, you know, unstructured data is just a little bit more difficult to manage you know, and protect you know, than structured. Now, as you can see over the years, um, the use of data has really exploded. Um, structured data has gone up, but, but as you can see, unstructured data has kind of gone through a little bit of an explosion over the last few years. Um, corporations, even though there's challenges with managing unstructured data, they're really seeing that value that's in, in that data. So they're just trying to capture pretty much any data they can get their hands on. Now we're going to start off with MySQL, or as some would call it, MySQL. And this is just going to be a really good starting point for us because it's, it's as you can see, it's well in use. Um, plenty of documentation out there, plenty of different tools and visual tools and just different things that can help you um, with that. And you know, it, and plus you'll see something like post. Postgres SQL, it, it'll, it's very similar to SQL. It might have a few different, the query language, structured query language, that's what SQL stands for, is going to be fairly similar, very similar to MySQL, where if I took something like MongoDB and Cassandra, uh, how I, the language which I query that data is going to be different. It's not going to be nearly as similar as, say, some of these different SQL variants. So to download this, you'll, you'll go over to mysql.com. And just as a heads up, if you just go down to downloads, they're probably going to try and get you to subscribe to their service. You know, they want to make some money too. Um, so obviously, it, this is what the website looks like right now, and that's going to change over time. I would, I would bet over time, you know, if you just click on downloads, whatever you do, they're going to go ahead and advertise their own, their own services. They're going to want to try and make some money. But what we're looking for is for the free download. So the website's probably going to look different from you as, this, as time goes on. Look for a developer tab or zone like we have here. And what we're going to look for is something where it's a download. If it says free trial, it's probably some kind of service that you'd eventually have to pay for. But just look for a section that says downloads. And we have MySQL downloads. And like for instance, here we have MySQL installer for Windows, or it'd probably say whatever your uh, user interface is. And so if you click on that, it's gonna, gonna download. Oh, it's gonna open up a, a window so you can download. And just go ahead and click on download. And then when it's done, just uh, go ahead and click uh, down the bottom, bottom bar like open when done. Uh, you'll probably want the workbench. Um, the examples wouldn't hurt either, but obviously you'll want the uh, the database uh, server as well. But anyway, uh, this is not meant to be an all-encompassing overview. Obviously, that you know databases would be several courses in their own right. But this is just kind of an overview, so that way we can get started with utilizing databases and really add some value to our websites. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please post them at the bottom. Uh, if you like the video, uh, please like, subscribe, uh, share with a friend. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.